What is up guys? Welcome back to my reaction channel. It's your boy Chris. Today we're gonna be reacting to The Cost of Concordia by Internet Historian, you know? So yeah, before we get into the videos and shit, you know, I uploaded the video a while ago and it got blocked. It got blocked, you know? I understand if you have copyrighted, you know? I understand a lot, but to block it, what the fuck's wrong with you, bro? Like, seriously, you just have to copyright it, you don't need to block it. By the way, the video was Key and Peel, you know? So I know it's not the... It's not the Key and Peel who blocked it, you know? They can copyright shit, I know for a fact, but they... Bro, somebody blocked it, alright? And this is the problem with... I'm just pissed, you know? But I... Anyways, guys... Subscribe to my channel, you know, like the video, hit the bell button for post notifications, you know, if you have any suggestions, comment down below, if you wanna see more of my reaction videos, head down to my playlist, let's get into the intro guys, god damn it. get this over it bro i'm still salty as fuck about the kinfield video that i Ship that i got dreams. Shit, it's crazy bro it's been eight years i can still smell the buffets from their five restaurants the casino and three-story theater i hope i don't get copyrighted with this song ah, in the background bro jim the day spa <laughs> The sheets in uh, 1,500 luxurious cabins hadn't even been slept in. Costa Concordia cost $570 million to build. And you could tell. You could really Bro, that's expensive tell. as fuck. $570 million? I remember it like it was just a few years ago. We had left Civitavecchia, a port in Rome, and we were making our way to Savona. It was day two of our seven day journey. But that ship, I, she was cursed. <laughs> when she premiered, the traditional bottle of champagne bounced right off the oh, side that's not good. instead of smashing. A bad omen, but I'm not the superstitious. That's not good. Nothing could go wrong on Friday the 13th of January 2012 on the 100th year anniversary of the Titanic on a ship that's also Wait, only safety rated for two compartment flooding especially not when you have a five star max level captain like Francisco Scatino a man who mysteriously rose from head of security to the position of captain within just a couple of years he knows exactly what to do in case of an emergency. Oh, that's bad news, For example, bro. when he caused this emergency in 2008, when he crashed into a port in Sicily. And in 2010, in Vernemont, Germany, when he was steering a different ship and came into port too fast and caused another collision. Holy shit, bro. I've got a good feeling about this. So let's set the scene. He crashed on... Bro, what the it's fuck? It's a beautiful evening. People are having fun on the slides. Oh, this Drinks list, at the though. bar. Antonio Magnotta is playing piano at the restaurant. Martin the Magician is setting up for his show. And the ship is setting up for a little detour. It's called a sail by salute. Basically, you get real close to the shore and honk the horn. The locals hate it, bag, bro. but the customers <laughs> love it, Damn and it's a tradition. Scatino, the captain, that is comes into the dining room with the lady, right there, bro. Dominica Samorta. Remember this face, Douchebag. because you'll be seeing a lot of it later. Scatino eats his dinner with her, and socializes for a little while. Then, he, Dominica, and the maitre d' finish up and excuse themselves. They're heading to the bridge. It's time for that sail-by salute. This time, they're going to get closer than ever. Just 1,500 feet from the island of Giglio. All right. And how are they going to determine this distance? Well, of course, the captain is going to eyeball it. What? Apparently, it's not an uncommon thing to do. Scatino turns to the fella steering, his helmsman, okay. Jacob Rusleben. First interesting tidbit. Costa Crochier has hired Jacob from Indonesia at a rock bottom price, and he's a bit of a newbie to the job. In fact, his profession hitherto, a painter and a cleaner. 
It's his first time steering a massive ship, and he's very excited. At what least, we think he is. It's hard to tell, because he doesn't speak English or Italian very well at all. Off to a good start. The second in command orders the helmsman to 290. Bro, that... Now, don't be confused by these numbers, I'm, I'm they're just the degrees on the compass. This. At the same time, the captain whips out his cell phone and calls former captain Mario Palombo, who lives on the island. They chat about the safe distance to Giglio's shores. It's all very casual. Anyway, Mario says good. that the safe distance is between 0.3 and 0.4 miles from shore. The captain is going all in. This is not his first sail by salute, so he's confident in what he's doing. We're going closer than we've ever been before. The captain's eyeballing it again. Hmm. New heading of 300, he tells the helmsman. Downstairs, Martin is about to cut his assistant in half. And of course, that means that there's already a lady inside this box. She's waiting for the queue, and then she'll poke her legs out. The captain is giving more orders. Pulling gently to 310. Increase speed to 16 knots. Going this fast is going to be a fatal error. Why? But before we talk about that, let's talk about another big problem. Language barrier. Because at this point, the captain says, 325. But the helmsman relays, 315. So the first officer intervenes, and he goes, what? no, 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 335, which is also wrong. And then the captain clarifies, no, 325. The helmsman confirms, 325. Their poor communication has them moving at a much wider angle than they think they are. Bro, However, they cut the captain should and would people. know this, except for the next problem, complacency about procedure. The standard procedure of a ship this large is for the third officer to give exact positional coordinates every time the captain gives a new directional order. Okay. But they're not doing that. 3.30, he says. The helmsman relays 3.30. The ship reaches 16 knots. The captain then turns to the second officer and instructs him to go to the left wing. That's these things here, and they basically exist so you can get a better view over the whole vessel. A few seconds pass, and then the mood starts to turn. Scatino notices white foam of waves breaking against the rocks directly in front of him oh, no. in the distance. The Costa Concordia, right now, is almost 700 meters this closer like to the rocks Titanic, than it yeah. should be. Without deviation, be there good. is going to be <laughs> a direct collision. Oh, shit! Scatino oh, immediately shit, commands the ship to start turning away. <laughs> 335! Not enough. The captain shouts, 340! The captain yells, 350! Now, remember how I said that accelerating to 16 knots was a fatal error? Well, that's because it's made this ship incapable of such a drastic turn. What they've got is understeer. Here's an example. The front end is not working. You're turning, 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 and you're just going straight. You okay, want to go over here, but you're going to end up over here. So despite the yeah. order of 350, gonna right burn. now the bow is still only pointing at 327. Not nearly enough to miss the rock. And oh no, it's about to get worse. That language barrier again. In these critical moments where every second counts, the helmsman wrongly relays 340. The captain snaps back 350 How starboard, or we end up like, on the rocks. The third officer goes to assist the helmsman. People should at least understand number Now, don't get confused English, by the orders right? from here. English We're changing number, over you know, to rudder one, instructions. Two, three, like that. The captain yells, starboard 10, starboard 20, and still it's not enough. Hard to starboard. That means as hard as it'll go. But at this point, even if they clear these rocks, they need to get the rest of the ship to swing around it. So the captain yells, midship, which centers the rudder. The bow is now less than 150 meters from Skull Rock. Holy port shit, 10. bro. But the helmsman only gets to port five before another order is given two seconds later. Port 20. They might just avoid disaster here, maybe. But then, oh no. One more time, the helmsman cocks up at the worst possible moment. The helmsman goes to starboard instead of what? port, undoing the swing. Bro, you're... Eight seconds later, he realizes the error and corrects, but you it's You fucked up big time, bro. He has just turned a probable near miss into a sure hit. All they can do now is hold on Stupid, as the bow bro. of the ship Stupid. narrowly passes by the God rocks. Damn. Hard to port! The second officer yells, we're gonna hit! Collision. 
Bro, whoever is in the helm, stupid as hell, bro. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> bro, I'm telling you. This. You should have at least understand English numbers, right? Like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Right? Jesus Christ. Bad time. Downtown, North This is what happens town. when you hire like people it's who don't 56, even have experience or have uh, any qualifications. Roulette. Seems to I itself, never know. win. They Go cut corners and hiring people. Somebody know. has to. So I see, hear the, the captain himself was stupid as hell. He I'm already crashed things. two ships already. I'm looking and for this fellow. I got to find uh, him. Then. It's breaking my little heart. I'll see what I can do. I have contacts in thousands of servers and dozens of countries across the globe. And just like that, she was gone. The only thing she left was a calling card. Sometimes when you follow a case, it follows you back. <laughs> NordVPN can protect my online data. Russell, but who can protect me? From myself. Internet story is the only when they said this job gets easier, it was just another lie. Forensics found his you know. password spread all the way down the block. In a perfect yeah, world, like we'd all use NordVPN. But I guess this isn't video, that kind you know. of story. I took the brakes off my car. Man like me never really learned how to stop. Shut the fuck up. I took the steering wheel out too. I let the road take me where I'm supposed to be. That's right, Toots. Your husband's <laughs> dead. Merry Christmas. Go to nordvpn.com slash internet story for a huge discount on two. Alright, bro. Let's continue, bro. Come on. Add? Uh. The ship hits rocks on the port side. A 53 meter gash opens up in the hull, and thousands of tons of water begin pouring in. A loud scraping and bang is heard by all passengers. At the helm, there's panic. Rumblings in the dining room. Martin awkwardly pauses his act as he's helping his assistant into the box. Meanwhile, it, it the lady wouldn't even happen if you're you're not not terrified. Back this confusion to across the ship. The all of the crew off the ship to come back ship. on duty. You know what I'm all officers run to the bridge. Technical crews run down to the lower decks to assess damage. On connection with the rocks, they lose propulsion and slow to 8.3 knots. And they are oh, now that's adrift. Bad. Close yeah, the watertight doors at stern. Enormous volumes of water are pouring in. So much so that within 29 seconds of collision, all six engines stop working through flooding. 22 seconds later, a blackout happens. Lights, electrics, oh, water bad. pumps too. Everything. The captain orders the helmsman hard starboard. Panic, this is bro. the final position of the rudder before power to that too is lost. The Costa Concordia, now without power, is drifting starboard, plunged into absolute darkness. A quick breakdown of the flooding. When the Concordia struck land, it tore open three watertight compartments. At first, compartment five, which filled very rapidly, then six more slowly, four shortly after, then seven, eight, and three. Modern ships are built to withstand two compartment breaches. These compartments especially, though, are a problem because they contain the engines and the electrics. How These main generators give are, power bro. to the whole How ship. Bad luck they From are. propulsion motors to rudder to hotel Jesus functions, Christ. pretty much everything. When they went out, the ship was a functionless, sinking cage. A few seconds later, the emergency batteries for internal lighting and communications kick on. When the lights come back on, Martin has vanished. He's ditched the stage. <laughs> and it caused a huge the panic in the theater club. as passengers <laughs> are trying to flee to their cabins and to muster stations. People already in their cabins come out and start putting on life vests. Staff rally and try to calm everyone down. Everything is fine. There's no need for vests. Please return to your cabins. The emergency generator starts. <laughs> All of the watertight doors close except for door 12 which is jammed. Trap, the captain bro. calls Pilon, the chief engineer, as the ship begins to list on the port side. There's water coming in? Yes, there's water. But where? The engine room. But a lot of water? 
Yes! There's water, you can't go down. Let's go down the other side. In a moment, we'll start the pumps, I'll let you know. In the theater, the whole magic box apparatus slides He's right off the stage denial, and falls though. into the crowd, further increasing panic. On this the bridge, an announcement dumbass. is being prepared. They are going to lie to prevent a panic. Let's just say we have a blackout. The deputy chief engineer enters the engine control room. He confirms to the bridge that at least compartments five, six, and seven are flooded. Announcements are made. The captain to inform you that due to an electrical fault, which is currently under control, we are currently in a blackout. Our technicians are working to resolve the situation. Lying is not bad. That's not the problem. It's not that big. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for your attention. But this one is a life-threatening. Coincidentally, know? at the same time in the restaurant, they're playing "My Heart Will Go On," and it's very much not helping the situation. The captain calls the Costa Crisis Unit, Roberto Ferrarini. He tells the Crisis Unit that they've hit a rock, that they're assessing damages and that they are also in a blackout. The Crisis Office says to reverse the ship up onto shore. Well, how are you going to do that? You don't have power to the rudder, let alone the engine. You know, hoist the sails? Anyway, around this time, the wind direction creates a starboard list, and the ship begins to turn anyway, drifting right back towards the shore, which is a very good thing because you want the ship to end up as close to shore as possible. A panicked passenger senses that something is off. This isn't like any electrical problem that she's ever seen. Plus, there was a massive crashing noise, and now the ship is tilting. So, she contacts her daughter in Italy. The daughter then calls the police, and the police call the harbour master. While that goes on, a conversation Brian, between Pilon is. and Ambrosio. The diesel is not starting. The captain asks the engine room, but where have we made contact? Thinking that the incoming water can be reduced. Captain, here everything is lost. The electrical panel, everything. They're saying at this point that the ship is going down. The captain calls Roberto Ferrarini again. Uh, actually, two compartments have been flooded, but don't worry, the ship's stability isn't no. in danger. Wrong. Passengers begin going to muster stations on their own initiative. The cruise director says, We have a lot of people at muster stations that I do not want to fall overboard. Do we make an announcement to tell them to go to the lounges? Bozio says, I think that's best. The harbour master from Livorno calls the ship. The captain tells them that we, we just have a blackout. How long has this what? blackout been going on? About 20 minutes. Have you asked passengers to put on life vests? Yo, it, this just a blackout. Is lying I, I as hell, bro. The harbour master He's is suspicious. Our lives. He says to his superiors that he thinks something more is going on. Thank he calls you. a patrol boat to the area and asks them to look Jesus at the ship. Christ, Another problem. The fan on the emergency diesel generator isn't working properly. Pilon manually has to turn the thing on and off with a screwdriver so that it doesn't overheat and cause a fire. The captain is on the phone to the lower decks asking pointless questions like, is it still flooded? No. Yes. Yes, it is. The captain is essentially in denial of the situation. The harbour master calls again. Finally, he says, God the ship is taking on water through an opening in the left side and the ship is listing. He qualifies with, no one dead or injured. The harbour master asks if he needs help. Just a tow boat. When in reality, they need a full rescue. With three compartments flooded, the captain finally realizes that things are really bad and they are not going to improve. The Coast Guard orders every available ship to the scene. Meanwhile, well, at least there the, is fun fast, the cruise director's right? assistant says, uh, everything's under control. Please return to your cabins or hang about in the lounges, no problem. She said this despite knowing it was wrong and that it <laughs> further endangered lives. Most passengers at this Bro, point aren't listening to this nonsense ever. and they're busy figuring out how to abandon that the ship. Bing, 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 bing. Local television has already picked up the story and they begin broadcasting live radio feed from the bridge. Uh, Captain, the passengers are going on board the boats. Okay, let them go to shore. So then general emergency? Wait, nah. let me talk to Ferrarini. We risk the emergency generators that do not have cooling. It has cooling problems, 100 degrees. The cooling fan has stopped. Pilon calls the bridge and tells the safety officer they need to evacuate. The safety officer relays this to the captain, yeah, but after no response, now, he orders bro. the engine room Seriously. to evacuate on his own. The captain says, no, stay. We're leaving. So what do we do? General emergency? We send that to our food, I just, you know. The captain tells Ferrarini that he's abandoning ship. Abandoned ship! Another announcement is made. 
Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. The situation is under control. Please remain calm and at this time proceed to your master station. They're located outside on deck four. The Livorno Coast Guard calls again. The captain declares distress. The Coast Guard officially calls for rescue operations. They contact Pietro Mille, the helicopter base commander, who then calls in every available pilot as he rushes down to the helicopter base. Pilon shuts down the emergency generator for the final time. The first rescue vessel arrives. By this point, the lifeboats are already going. Luckily, the ship is very close to shore. Oh, perhaps too close to shore. The ship forcefully oh no. runs aground, creating an uneven center of gravity and it begins heavily listing starboard. The captain issues a general emergency on board. The announcement to abandon ship is finally called and alarms ring out. And with that comes panic. And now that they're listing, too late, with though. many of what the lifeboats the too awkwardly positioned to enter the water, there aren't enough readily available and they have to start going back and forth to the shore, picking people up and dropping them off. The patrol boats report to the Livorno Harbour Master that the ship has run aground and is listing heavily. So the harbour master asks the captain about it, and the captain says, no, 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 the ship is still floating. Uh, in fact, we're trying to manoeuvre it onto the shore. They know he's lying. Hold on, I'm reversing it. Maybe, Somebody got to beat this mob. The captain says this, to bottom you know out the starboard anchor. Somebody got to beat this So they drop out the anchors, but this let out too much lying too, effectively so rendering them useless. God damn it. The deputy mayor of Chile, funny, Mario Pellegrini, crazy. and tobacco shop owner Giovanni Rossi arrive at the harbour. They watch the scene unfold. As the first of the lifeboats arrive on shore, the deputy mayor takes the initiative and races to board one of the lifeboats, returning to the ship, and starts trying to find someone in charge. Yo, this guy is he gives up and starts helping passengers. He actually try to Scatino tells everyone there. to leave and take radios. No, he actually go but there. But not though. before changing out of his uniform and into a nice suit. Priorities. Dimitri Christidis and no, Sylvia Kowalka leave with him. That, so the maitre d' and Samor can both get out of there. By this point, approximately 300 people are still on the ship. Mille reaches the helicopter base. Wait, what are you, what's the first doing helicopter, again? a slow-moving Augusta Bell, was already rising from the tarmac Shouldn't the captain, the like, the last south. person to go out Bozio the is the ship, last crew member you know? left on the bridge, coordinating evacuation. He then leaves to help passengers board lifeboats. The bridge is now abandoned. Is and then, the ship's black box stops working. Yeah, that's not Apparently the Apparently there were technical right? problems like, with it. That can, means, from here, things, things are going to get a little you know. foggy in detail. A while later, rescue helicopters arrive, but they're struggling to find the ship because they're expecting it to still be well above water. Passengers are scaling down the port side by ladder as lifeboats return God to pick damn, them up. damn, bro. This is no, no joke. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it was no, no joke anymore. <laughs> Yes. Is that one again? Oh yeah, that's the one with the cup. The second helicopter, a faster model, sets off. The ship stops healing and comes to a final resting place. Now the Coast Guard calls the captain because he's just learnt that the captain has abandoned ship. The captain claims, uh, uh, no, actually I slipped and I fell into one of the lifeboats. Ooh, I'm a klutz. But now that I'm on board, I, I may as well head back to shore. Bro, DeFelco tells God. the captain to get the fuck back on board oh, shit. and the captain kind of acts oh, confused shit. and then effectively refuses so the captain makes it to shore from here we only have mainstream news reports to rely on so it's Yo, not going to be super get the back on board, but they say that saying? Giglio's police chief he then finds 110 survivors on the rocks at point Gabianara, and among them is the captain it's not known whether the captain helped anyone while he was there. And in fact, the police chief claimed that he just sat on the rocks and watched other people do the rescuing. A while later, a rescue boat picks up You're the captain and takes him to the harbour. He speaks to the police. Uh, small he then father. finds the ship's onboard chaplain, Father Rafael so. Molina, and cries <laughs> to him for about 15 minutes. <laughs> then he goes to the harbour master's office to receive probably the biggest dressing down of his entire life. Port authorities ask the taxi driver to take the captain back to his hotel. The captain takes the 30-second cab ride to the Bahamas Hotel. According to the cabbie, he was beaten like a dog. He was cold and afraid. <laughs> he only asked me where he could buy a pair of fresh socks. <laughs> but then he perked right up again and gave an interview to a news crew. He told them that he was the last to leave. The captain is usually the last to abandon ship. What happened, captain? Oh, so we were the last to leave the ship. 
Boss. All day, sir. What a lying piece of shit, bro. What? Bro, I'm not even laughing, bro. I'm, I'm pissed at this stupid ass guy, bro. Lying piece of shit. God risk damn it, bro. For the ship. Somebody got a Sunday morning, a South bro. Korean couple was found in their cabin, safe but shivering. They had slipped through God the crash and woke up unable to exit their cabin. The last survivor, Manrico Giampandroni, was found with a broken leg. He was the cabin service director. In the end, 32 people died. The final body wasn't discovered until See, nearly three years later. Died, a crew member, Russell Rebello, and it's believed that he died a hero helping passengers off the ship. The Costa Concordia was the largest cruise ship disaster since the Titanic. And then there's the ship. This is what happens to a 110,000 ton cruise liner when it's left half rolled over in the ocean. Who the hell put him in the captain in the first place? Like, he had had records of two crashes in his resume. That should be the red flag already, bro. These people be cutting corners, hiring people that is not even qualified, bro. Stupid as hell. That's look like from horror movies, some shit, no. But this isn't the end. It's just the halfway point. What most people oh, know is that now. the Costa Concordia had crashed, many dead, and then the captain abandoned ship like a coward. But yeah. there's a whole veritable spaghetti of details to untangle. Let's dive in. There they are. The deets. <laughs> the <fuck? laughs> The deets. The Costa Concordia was more than just a floating resort. There's a mall, a casino, cha-ching, cha-ching. Oh, yeah. This iron chest was full of safes and cash registers and expensive fittings. And there were plenty of gamers prepared oh, to sneak shit. by authorities and try their luck that. in the hot zone. Within Bobby. days, police divers reported that valuable items, <laughs> once seen lying around the ship, were now missing. <laughs> High-end liquor, expensive furniture, Dining sets, cash from the casino, cash registers, jewelry and display cabinets, safes, Japanese woodblock prints by famous 18th century artists, as well as the iconic bell, which hung from the bridge of the ship. It was never found. <laughs> Who steals a big fuck off bell? Even the server admins were getting involved. Four divers who were part of the company contracted to refloat the Concordia were spotted on CCTV, sneaking out to the ship. The patrol boat was dispatched, and the men were caught inside the fancy suites with rucksacks full of stolen goods. The four men are charged with stealing <laughs> and thieving and pinching. Later on, uh, stolen as well as legitimate items found their way to Amazon and eBay. Chips from the casino, postcards, and cabin access cards became highly sought after souvenirs. It even has a watermark. Some Australian guy even made a <laughs> listing for the ship itself, advertising it as buyer to collect. And although no. there were plenty of bidders, eBay pulled the plug. <laughs> this this goddamn bro. Opportunistic. I know you want to see Scatino go to jail, and we'll get to that. But first, we bro, have to I talk want about him someone up, else. You know what I'm saying? Dominica Samorton. That was a close one. There was speculation that she was on the bridge that evening because she was the captain's mistress. Intense -E. media speculation you know. reports that her presence distracted oh, the captain. Mom. They both denied their love for years and maintained that they were just friends. Although she did later admit to the media just that she friends. found him handsome. And how could you not? You so fucking precious when you smile. But she says there was no romantic link between them. Some people would like to believe, they want to know I have something with him, it's more interesting, it's like, you know, some spicy, spicy. in the story. Miss Morton also loved the spotlight, however. Oh, everyone, all up! And took several <laughs> interviews. 
But as the pressure mounted, oh, upon, this has, yeah, she began good, making man. ominous threats to Scatina, oh. saying he must confess and that you have but one week to come clean. But things from here get weird. Spicy. Sir Morton is a bit of a wild card. <laughs> Spicy. In a subsequent interview, she claimed a helicopter came to the ship well before the other rescue craft to take away a package. Huh? And what was that package? He's lying, bro. He's Drugs, lying. apparently. <laughs> so rumors began that the ship was running narcotics for the Mafia. And not without cause, a number of cruise ships, even recently, have been caught trafficking drugs. As an oh. aside, Scudino was tested for drugs immediately for after the crash. Reason, huh? He tested negative for drugs in his system, but trace amounts of cocaine were found in a hair sample. Makes it smoother and less dry. Nonetheless, the Concordia was searched and no drugs were reportedly ever found. How did we get here? Huh. Oh right, a helicopter. Sir Morton hey. commented on <laughs> it again the next day and said, actually, that helicopter was just for the captain as a means of evacuation from the ship. Mm, okay, actually, wait. So she expected right. to get some sort of first class rescue while everyone else was still stuck on the ship? What a fucking wait, how bitch. did we get here? Oh, right, sex with the captain. Divers were quick to head to the captain's cabin where they found Miss Sir Morton's lingerie and other articles of clothing as well as a makeup bag. The jig was up, but they continued denying it. Sir Morton You're mostly lying, faded please. from international attention until she was told to appear before the court to present witness testimony. The judge pressed her to be truthful about their relationship, or she would be held in contempt. Either tell me the yeah. truth or shut up. So finally, <laughs> she admitted it. She, yes, I had a sentimental relationship with the captain. Stop. But now, stop asking about my private life. She was indeed the captain's lover. What is up, trouble oh, no. nation? What's it? He not cheated on his wife with C. Mortan. Oh my god! She and Scatino had been having an affair for several weeks. She also said that on the night she boarded, she didn't have a ticket. Ticket, please. And didn't need to pay because nobody questions you when you're the captain's <laughs> lover. Naturally, she gave another confusing <laughs> interview after leaving court. I want to say that today is the second time I die because the first time I die in the night of the crush with my psychological brain and uh, problems. And today what? I die the second time because, of course, people <laughs> find out something that I what? try to hide. You Subsequent what? to the You're trial, she what? used her fame in Moldova <laughs> to become a political activist, often appearing on television oh, and radio and in articles covering this, protests, this kind of accompanied by pictures of her being arrested by police. All of that shit for a trash can. It was some stuff about victims of violence, women's rights, girl power, yada, yada, yada. Yada, yada. and interestingly, <laughs> part of a push to block the sale of shares of Moldova's train network to Russia. Sure, it's sure. Oh no, I don't. Pause, pause. First of all, why did she become a protester? You know, she's not even the moral high ground to be like that. You know what I'm saying, bro? Well, stop interfering in politics. You know what I'm saying, woman? God damn it. You almost possibly interfering in politics after doing some dirty shit. God. Wait up. There I don't really go. know what she's been up to. Let me just check on her inst. No, oh, God, not again. <laughs> He's now in the airplane. Bro. He's not in the plane. He's not in the ship. He's in the plane now. Several <laughs> civil suits were quickly lodged against Costa Crociere and their parent company, Carnival Cruises immediately saw a share drop of 23%. Yeah, it's your responsibility now, bro. Passengers sought compensation for their damaged mental health, lost belongings, and loved ones. Either they allowed him to divert from his course, or they didn't know where their billion dollar ship was. Within a few days, facing financial and media pressure, the CEO attempted to join the bandwagon against the captain and the crew. That was not the ordinary route that the ship uh, was uh, taking uh, at the time and, and was 
not only take him, but the time the, the ship Today, was Junior? claiming that the ship was not approved to deviate from the route. But that wasn't true. Approval isn't required if the ship is deviating by less than 15 miles, or that it was Liar. against company rules. Also untrue, lying, because investigators shit. found that they didn't have any guys. rules about deviating route and they tacitly encouraged sail by salutes. Now, in response to the civil suits, Costa Crociere offered passengers 11,000 euros each as compensation. That's kind of small. 11,000 euros, about $14,000, is the minimum compensation die, under you know international law when a ship is abandoned. This was to reimburse them for their tickets, as well as any costs they accrued in having to unexpectedly travel home early. And that was supposed to release them from everything and anything that has to do with this accident. I cannot no. ask for more than this. A lot of passengers, no. understandably, were not too happy with this deal, and they refused to take the money. We think the offer is an insult for what these poor passengers went through. We think that the compensation being offered is not commensurate. Yeah. Later, would lodge a plea deal with the Tuscany court to pay a 1 million euro fine to avoid a criminal trial. The judge agrees. Costa Crociere is now off the hook for what all criminal fuck? liability for the whole thing. They've washed their hands of the incident and flecked the residual droplets of responsibility onto boss, the faces boss, boss, boss. of six staff members. Passen boss. Is that even allowed though? Like, God, bro, they've... Oh my God, I'm losing my mind right now. How are they gonna... What? Is that, is that even allowed? Like, running from your responsibility by paying a million dollars to a judge. And the judge accepted it, bro. That's a whole lot of new corruption right there, bro. I'm telling you. God damn. Italy, man. I, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying, bro. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. Not saying. I may I may come up as a bad person if I say it. You know what I'm saying, bro? Idiots. Passengers and relatives of the dead bro. are livid that the company has been able to avoid criminal responsibility. The offered is not commensurate. Civil suits against the company continue. By the way, the residents of the island of Giglio also banded together and sought damages. They didn't get much. Eventually, passengers who refused the initial compensation of eleven thousand joined civil parties against Scatino in his trial in 2015. It's not they were awarded <laughs> 30,000 euros each. Other cases, especially those involving lost relatives, are settled for undisclosed amounts. Scams. New York attorney Peter Rene traveled to Budapest to represent six real survivors of the disaster. At Rene and Rene, we personally work on every case. And we'll work harder than anyone to get you the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. And while on the job, Bro. a seventh <laughs> case cropped up via mail. email. An elderly woman, a loner, said, Help me, Mr. Rene, for I have lost my daughter, Eva, and my five-year-old granddaughter, Roxana. So Mr. Rene agreed to speak with her. However, there were some inconsistencies in her story. Neither Eva nor Roxana were on the passenger list. Odd, but Costa is known for having stowaways. Gotcha, bitch. Still, Mr. Renai was suspicious. They wouldn't cheaty old Petey, would they? Renai inquired further about why she was on board, especially without a ticket. Ilona said, Well, I don't know, but you should ask her boyfriend. Zolt Horvath. He'll know all the details. I'm up all night. I'm going crazy, he said. But Mr. Renai was still suspicious. Because then she asked, How much money do you think this is worth? Uh, red flag. This is a huge red flag. That's a red Petey. flag, yeah. In 20 it's years of flag, doing this, you've never had anyone ask about money. Why now? So Mr. Renai hired an investigator and sent photos around of the missing girl. The next day, the phone rang. Oh, hoi hoi. It was the boyfriend again. Uh, look. There's been a bit of a misunderstanding, and the child isn't missing at all. Huh. Uh -huh. And then he claimed he was confused because so he had I'm done too many suddenly. drugs the night before. Okay. Oh. Okay, can I speak to the daughter then? At first, he was refused. So Renai said that he'd have to file a missing persons report to the police if he couldn't. The boyfriend relented. That night, Renai met with Zolt and brought the police with him. He speaks to the granddaughter and asks her if she's seen mum. Yeah, I saw her today. Oh, really? Oh. 
Yeah, we oh, went to the park today and we went on the swings. Snitch. Oh no, the jig was up. <laughs> so the mum walks into the room sheepishly. Bro. It's a miracle. And the nah. story changed again. Okay, I'm not dead, but I did injure me leg when I jumped from the ship. And then I immediately flew back to Budapest. Although, don't worry about checking my leg because there are no visible marks or injuries. Uh, oh, pretty, I'm video. beginning to think they yeah. weren't even on the boat. Also, it turns out this lady isn't her mum, it's just a neighbour. Eventually, Renee managed to make the pair confess. And then they said, hey, we haven't done anything wrong. We haven't taken any money. And in the end, it looks like this there'll be no criminal funny, punishment bro. for the scam. Because Hungary, a former communist what? country, has no laws against insurance fraud on the books. <laughs> The locker room that never sleeps, call 1-800-664-7 Bro. Oh, that's a bad idea. Oh, that's a very bad idea. <laughs> Mario, would you teach me some Italian? Oh, of course. <laughs> Means get back on board for fuck's sake. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Gregorio De Falco. The naval officer who shouted at Scutino to Vada a bordo caso became a bit of a national hero overnight in Italy. He, like the rest of the world, expected Scutino to go down with the ship. And when the captain chickened out, De Falco was there to admonish him. And when he stopped answering the radio, he called him on his cell phone to continue putting him on blast. <laughs> Yay, when the captain the, first reported just a blackout, De Falco didn't believe the story and immediately began preparing a rescue effort, which likely saved several lives. Finally, bro, His actions were applauded right by there, most though. Italians who were tired Shit. of their public servants being corrupt and avoiding yeah. responsibility. According to shirts sporting Vada you know, Abordo Caso were being printed by the end of the week, the, others you know, setting it as their phone's ringtone. But then, in September 2014, without warning, De Falco was transferred to an admin role in the Coast Guard. What? Hear what I said, you've been demoted. De Falco said that he had been passed up for promotion, that he had also not been told which admin office he was even being transferred to, and that it all effectively cancelled 10 years of his career. You De know Falco what? I'm gonna say it, bro. Triz. In Italy, your official sucks so bad, you know. They suck ass so bad with their corruption and shit, and you know Admiral what I'm saying? Admiral his former boss, his status among the public, overshadowed his superior in many ways. On the other hand, his boss said, Ah, no, it's part of a normal career progression for naval officers and that he like must show more maturity and professionalism to advance his career. Now, it's hard to know what's true in office politics, so let's leave that alone. And anyway, in 2018, De Falco said buenas noches, ya later, to the Italian Navy to become a politician. In March <laughs> that year, he was elected to the Italian Senate, serving as a member for Livorno. He still Finally. serves there today. I'm the company now. They did him dirty though, like, after every day they gotta demote him. Jetline. The day after the disaster, Scatino was taken into custody by police and underwent questioning. However, it was clear that, that this would not be a straightforward investigation. So the judge released him under house arrest at his home in Sorrento, a town in Napoli. By July of that year, the house arrest was relaxed and he was allowed within this general area. While under house arrest, he wrote a book with this journalist from Rai magazine. I have no idea what it says, I don't speak Italian. But goddammit, he must have some kind of charisma going on, because there's been a lot of speculation in the press that he had an affair with her oh, no. as well. You can't keep getting away <laughs> Hold on, I got it, I got it. Not content with abandoning his ship, this dude is determined to abandon his wife as well. So, Scutino and five others are <laughs> facing criminal charges. Like a snail, Straight bro, away, what everyone fuck? lodges a plea bargain with the court. And all of those plea bargains are accepted, except for Scatinos. And the condition yeah. of everyone's reduced sentences yeah. are that they must provide witness testimony against Scatino. He oh, shit. Me. Ciro, Jacob, and Sylvia were all given suspended sentences. Roberto and Manrico are able to opt for community service or house arrest. Not a bad deal. A good deal. Good deal. And that meant that Scatino was now all on his own. Ciro, the first officer, was the first to give his testimony. 
On the witness stand, he claimed that Scatino was distracted by his mistress and other guests on the bridge. Oh my God. <laughs> there was confusion over who was in command. Then it was Jacob's turn. And he said, Lamau XD, because he didn't actually bother with his Lamau testimony <laughs> or his reduced sentence. He just fled the country. It took authorities Lamau. 12 months to eventually <laughs> track him down on the outskirts of Jakarta. Oh. And when they said, Oi, we still want that witness testimony. He did <laughs> scalp it again. And he hasn't been found since. Bro, After that, that Ferrarini gave bro. his testimony. Then, so, uh, look, we don't have time to relitigate the whole trial. So let's just go straight to the verdict. Guilty! Scatino was found guilty of multiple manslaughter, <laughs> causing a shipwreck, Demolis. abandoning ship, and lying to authorities. He is yeah. sentenced to 16 years and one month in prison. But wait, there's still the appeals. The appeals trial begins. And the verdict on the appeal? Surprise! Rejected! So All Scatino's right. lawyers appealed again. At least they did a good and the thing. verdict on the final appeal? Scatino made multiple attempts <laughs> to a plea deal, but was denied Bitch. by the prosecution each time. The prosecution called for Scatino to be sentenced to 26 years in prison, calling the incident a titanic Oh, someone affair. added a uh, okay, year I see what you did there. Scatino was not present. Okay. His lawyer stated that he was waiting outside of the jail for the ruling, so that if his plea was rejected, he could immediately start serving his sentence. And with that, five years and four months after the disaster, Wait, it took five he was years finally to convict the guy? Is that how slow the justice system is? Oh like, is that even the standards? I don't know, bro. Like, <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> tips. The salvage operation was enormous. It took over two years and cost an estimated $1.2 billion. Beginning in early 2012, they first spent two months pumping fuel from the ship's tanks. At the same time, they had to pump seawater in so that the balance um, wasn't affected and the ship didn't slide around. How much the ship? In early 2013, a platform was built under the ship to I prevent it from falling further. Sponsons were then attached to the sides of the ship and cables attached to the what underwater the platform. Fuck, the sponsons were then dragged underwater and opened up That's to allow so the ocean to fill ship. The ship could then roll over properly. And they just... By late 2013, the ship was upright once more. The sponsons were then attached to the side of the ship to help keep it balanced. It now rested partially above water and crews could walk around safely. By July 2014, the water was removed from the sponsons and compressed air was pumped in to lift the ship. And she was ready to cruise again. This time to a port in Genoa. It was a four-day towing journey to the docks where a two-year process of dismantling and recycling would begin. That same weekend of the towing, Scatino was busy. He was the guest of honor at a white party on an island in the Bay of Naples. Wait, he I appeared thought he on the front page of a local newspaper, flanked by two of Italy's most eligible bachelorettes. <laughs> oh, swear to God, bro, I want to beat the guy so bad. Anyway, so these are the things that I remember from the Costa Concordia. That sweet maiden of the sea. And as for you, little fella. <laughs> they never found the bell. <laughs> they never found the well, bell. It's time and to was, you. It was in. <laughs> From whence you came. <laughs> the last video, the last scene in the Titanic where the old woman threw the, the gem, right? The diamonds. <laughs> Six quick things. One, Yo. NordVPN, good product, check them out. Number two, bro, there's a new video on the second sorry, channel. You man. probably didn't see Shit, it because bro. it was temporarily so restricted. Good. Now it's not. Enjoy. Three, if you've never seen the second channel before, give it a go. It's a di Yo, that is Costa Concordia, the internet historian, you know. Somehow managed me to forget about my bullshit ass anger towards a uh, kid film video that I got blocked, you know. But hey, my thoughts on this one is that why do they even hire the guy, you know what I'm saying? Why do they even hire a guy who already crashed two ship already? He already have two fucking records already. Dismiss the guy, bro, you know what I'm saying? Don't even hire a guy who has already have a fucking record. Not one, twice, you know? Crashing a ship, twice. 
should be a red flag already to not hire the guy. Also, you need still to still like rise to the ranks. You know what I'm saying? How? Why is it no one investigating that shit? You know what I'm saying? Also, the judge who oversee the case that was paid one million dollars just to be just to drop the case on the company. I'm supposed to say you're you're an idiot. You're a bitch. You know what I'm saying? Stupid ass corrupted judge. Could have been avoided, you know, if they didn't just sail by saloon. You know, if they didn't just sail by saloon, it could have been avoided easily. And now there's a lot of people dead, like 30 people, you know. It's just crazy, man. But hey, you know what it is? Like the video, guys, you know. Subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell button for post notifications. If you have any suggestions, comment down below. If you want to see more of my reaction video, head down to my playlist. With that being said, I'll see you guys.